I rise today to speak on the American Jobs Matter Act legislation introduced by myself, Senator Blumenthal, Senator Brown, and Senator Merkley. Um, Madam President, no one's going to disagree that this country has the greatest, most powerful military in the world. And although the Defense Department has not been spared from the draconian cuts included in sequester, we still have a robust defense budget. Annual defense spending has grown from about $287 billion in 2001 to over $700 billion today. It's hovering today around 6% of GDP. A significant portion of these federal defense dollars are used to purchase manufactured goods that make our military the preeminent fighting force in the world. In order to have the best military, you need the best people, and we certainly have that. But you also need the best stuff, and we have that as well. It's not debatable that our industrial base, going all the way back to the iconic assembly lines that churned out the machinery that was used to defeat fascism during World War II, to today's shipyards that are producing our nuclear-powered submarines. Nobody debates that our industrial base isn't still the best in the world. But 20, 30, or 50 years from now, are we still going to be the best? That's the question before us today, and the question that this legislation seeks to answer. Over the past five years, the Department of Defense has cumulatively spent about $700 billion on manufactured goods. And at that same time, over that same period of time, the U.S. has lost 1.7 million manufacturing jobs. Now, why is this? Obviously, there's no single answer to this question. But it's telling that during this period of time also, DOD has spent $124 billion purchasing goods from foreign manufacturers. Now, some of these foreign manufacturers are in countries that are our allies today and are always going to be our allies. But some of these foreign manufacturers come from countries that aren't our allies today and are never going to be our allies. But the bottom line is that when we outsource defense manufacturing capabilities, either to allies or to our adversaries, manufacturers shut down in this country. And our capability to create and make critical defense items for our soldiers vanishes. The erosion of our industrial base kills jobs and it jeopardizes our national security. Now there are countless examples of how these spending decisions harm our industrial base, but I will give you just two examples that affect my home state of Connecticut. In Waterbury, Connecticut, there's a company that makes the metal tubing that goes into uh, every ship that the Navy builds. Uh, it holds the wires and the conduits. It's an incredibly complicated product, such that there are only about two or three companies in the world that make this. And for over 150 years, this company in Waterbury, Connecticut, has employed people in my state and kept our Navy equipped with the tubing it needs. But over the years, the Navy has started to favor a foreign competitor who frankly has a history of engaging in unfair trade practices in order to undermine its competitors. Now, they're offering the Navy a slightly discounted price than the American company. And so from the Navy's perspective, it's tempting to award that bid to an overseas contractor. But the monetary cost simply to the Navy can't be the only thing that we look at. First of all, if this company in Waterbury goes under, then we will forever lose the ability to make this critical defense item in the United States. Now today, the country from which we're buying this might be our ally, but who knows what the case will be 10 or 20 years down the line. And the fact is, you can't just recreate the expertise and the personnel and the machinery that makes this specific type of metal tubing. But second, even if the Navy gets a 5 or 10 or 15 percent discount on this particular item, that benefit to the Navy essentially disappears when you look at the overall cost to the U.S. taxpayer. Because when those jobs are lost in Waterbury, Connecticut, those men and women start qualifying for federal benefits like unemployment and Medica Medicaid. We lose the tax revenue that comes to the local government, the state government, and the federal government. And all of a sudden, that small discount that you got by going to a foreign manufacturer vanishes before your eyes. Here's a second example, and one that to a lot of Americans will be absolutely maddening. We have a machine that makes dog tags. 
we don't make dog tags centrally. We have a machine that goes out into the field and makes them for soldiers. And there's nothing more iconic or emblematic of the danger that soldiers put themselves in the sacrifice that they sometimes make than the dog tag. It's historically been made by a American-built machine. But recently, bids have been going to an Italian company that makes a similar machine simply because the Italian company's machine costs 3% less than the American machine. Now, first of all, it's not acceptable that our dog tags are not American-made. But second of all, that 3% difference is negligible when you compare it to all of the money lost when those jobs disappear in the United States. How can this happen? You know, there was overwhelming bipartisan consensus when we passed something called the Buy American Law 75 years ago. We said that we should give preference to companies in the United States when we're buying things from the United States military. And I don't think anybody today really questions the wisdom of that act. But over the years, we have built in loophole after loophole, exception after exception, into the Buy America Act, such that sometimes a minority of the parts of a particular thing that we're buying for the Department of Defense comes from American firms. Now, the real-world examples that I just mentioned and many others have prompted me, along with Senators Merkley and Brown and Blumenthal, to introduce the American Jobs Matter Act. Here's what this legislation will do. It's pretty simple. It will require that the Department of Defense, for the first time, has to measure domestic employment as a factor in awarding a contract. It's a simple premise. In the same way that DOD considers price and past performance when awarding work, they should also consider the impact on domestic employment in the award of the contract. Under this bill, our largest contractors would also have to account for the expected job creation of their subcontractors. Because that's where a lot of the problem is. You know, we're not buying a lot of big goods that are assembled in other countries, but the hundreds, if not thousands, of parts that sometimes go into a submarine or a jet engine or a tank or a Humvee are often made outside of the United States. This would require the contractor to present an estimate of how many jobs throughout the supply chain are created here in the United States. Under this bill, when DOD gets two similar bids, and one would create more American jobs than the other bid would, DOD can take that into account when awarding the contract. Frankly, most people that I talk to back in my home state of Connecticut think this already happens. People just assume that if past performance and price are about equal, that the home team should win. But today, there is no law that allows military contractors to make that distinction. This bill would allow them for the first time to do that. Retired U.S. Army Brigadier General John Adams recently published a study about the vulnerabilities in our defense supply chain. In this report, which mentioned actually some of the specific examples that I referenced, he said this, quote, the health of our manufacturing sector is inextricably intertwined with our national security, and that the United States national security is threatened by our military's growing and dangerous reliance on foreign nations for the raw materials, parts, and finished products needed to defend the American people. Madam President, it's time we change that. And the American Jobs Matter Act will put our defense industrial base on a stronger footing for the future. I yield the floor. I'd suggest the absence of quorum.